Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've got a battery test, tear down, and review for you today on these Wise batteries. This is Wise's Group 31 size 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. I've been running these for a few weeks now, so it's time to put them through their full paces, check them out, and we're going to find out if it's still a wise choice to buy Wise batteries. So let's go ahead and get started. So before I get in the video, full disclosure, I contacted Wise Battery Company. They did not contact me. I requested two samples from Wise because uh, I got a lot of 24 volt stuff coming up. There's a lot of stuff in the works behind the scenes on 24 volt. And I asked would they like to participate uh, in the 24 volt stuff that's upcoming that you, the viewers have requested. They agreed to send me two samples. So I'm gonna give them a tear down and test as a random sample on this batch. And then if everything's good, I'll be using these batteries and the 24 volt stuff that's coming up. So thank you wise for sending these batteries. And of course, if you've been with the channel any length of time, you know that this will not influence my decision making, uh, my opinions on what I find or anything like that. Cause if something's good, I'll tell you it's good. And if something's bad, I'll tell you it's bad. I just want y'all to get the best value and find you a good product. So no different with these. So I'm gonna do this video a little different since I've got two samples of the same battery. I'll be doing the capacity test on this battery and I'll be doing the tear down on this one simultaneously while this one's pulling down. So if I find anything interesting in here, I can load the inverter up or do different things with the battery that's actually doing the capacity test. So this should be pretty cool. But anyhow, this battery is fully topped off. You see this little minuscule current going in. That is from the display right there. I will pop the breaker and show you. So see, I disconnected the breaker from there. So turn it back on and then I will disconnect the charger. So we are fully charged, you saw that. No hidden wires, no funny business, just our negative, our positive. These are the leads where I put my different charge controllers to test things with. Breaker, sample and shunt, right up to the inverter. No hidden wires, anything like that. So I'll go ahead and fire the inverter off. The battery settled back down after it come off a charge. Energy meter's cleared out already. So there we go. The alpha inverter, 12 volt. It's pulling 4.7 watts idle. So now I'll put the load and get the capacity test started. And for the capacity test, I am charging a portable power station from this inverter. So I'll go ahead and put the load on. We'll see what it settles in at. Should be, you know, 400 ish is what the power station pulls. So we'll see what it what it settles in at. So 460 ish. Uh, watts coming out of there, 34 amps out of the battery. So the capacity test is underway. So while this battery's pulling down, I'll go ahead and give you your specifications for this battery. Of course, it is a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. I've got the quick tech specs right here. I'll give you a couple of screenshots to save you time. Instead of me rambling on about it, just a quick couple of slides. If you want to pause and look at it further, go right ahead. Another good thing about Wise batteries, they list their actual BMS parameters in the user manual. So we actually have something to go by. And another thing Wise provides in their manuals that many other manufacturers are lacking, they give you your charge curves, discharge curves, temperature curves, all that. So you can nerd out all that you want with their manual. And Wise also provides a 10 year warranty on their batteries. One last look at it, still sealed up. So I'll go ahead and tear into it and we'll see what we got. Build quality wise. Be right back with you. All right, 250 watt hours on the capacity test. Got the cover most of the way cracked on this one. All right, so I finished getting this cover off of this Wise battery. There we go, it's coming off now. Nice thick sealant on there. There we go. What we got going on here? Get you flipped around for a better look. All right, there's our wires. It's like we got two number 10, 200 degree jackets on the negative right there. Foam padding on the top of the battery. And what size is this positive lead? It looks like a six or an eight. Can't really see good from right there. It is a seven gauge. I'll try to get you a better shot of that in a minute. Let me get you a shot of this positive lead right there. Seven gauge, 200 degree jacketed, uh, you know, a little smaller than I'm used to seeing. Now, still an application for a storage battery, not necessarily a huge hitting battery. So good thing about having two and doing this test at live capacity test, uh, you can see I'm pulling 469 watts out, 12.83 volts coming out of the battery. 
into the inverter. So let me load it up live and show that, you know, what a small wire on the positive lead does under big load. So 12.84 volts right now, put some more load in it right now. There we go. Basically doubled the draw and we dropped down to 12.52 volts, 12.51 volts at 74 amps. So I imagine, you know, that's causing a little bit of a voltage droop. So anyhow, while that is still running over there, I'm gonna get this cell pack out, get all this epoxy board coating off of it and see what we got going on. Cell pack is out of the box. It was glued down big time on the bottom. It's got some contact paper and stuff in there on the bottom, two-sided adhesive. It's a very sticky, very difficult to get out of the case. It was secure in there, no moving around, foam everywhere, which is good. I'll take a look at it at the same time with you. All right, what do we have going on here? That's a very familiar looking BMS. That appears to be a uh, Cyhang. A Cyhang is a quality BMS used by many OEMs. I've got several batteries of Cyhangs. They perform well. So let me see if we can get the specs on it right here. Right there, let me zoom you in. It is a Cyhang 100 amp BMS. And there's all the different codes and things like that on it. So. Yeah, do with that what you will. NTC thermal sensor right here. We got a temperature sensor going under the cell pack. Balance leads here. Uh, everything's tight, no uh, no issues to be seen there. So I'll break it down a little further and we'll test everything out. I got the BMS disconnected from the actual cell pack so I could show you the cells and the construction of the unit. Uh, welded bus bars with expansion joints. I've tried to get some of this fish paper off. They got fish paper all over this battery. So they got fish paper stuck down to everything. It does have machine screws on the balance leads for the BMS. And I tried to get some cell data for you right here, uh, but the fish paper is pulling all the tags and data off. Did recover a QR code out from underneath that fish paper. You know, it's not defaced or anything like that. So, you know, I don't think these are used cells. They all are in good shape. There's no scratches, no scuffs. Everything is pristine on them. So I think we do have brand new cells. A little side view of the cells right here. We do have epoxy board separating each cell. Two layers of tie band compression. Don't see any bulging, anything weird going on with the cells. You know, like I said, they look pristine. Don't see any, any indication of used or repurposed cells. So everything looks good there. Same data marks on there, 279 on that. 279, 279, 279. So, uh, you know, Assuming they're all the same batch or tested equally. But yeah, nothing nothing out of the ordinary there. It looks just like your average run-of-the-mill lithium iron phosphate battery. And a close-up of the BMS and the FETs between the board and the heat sink. It does have a high temp bimetallic switch for high temp protection on the BMS. I will put an arrow for you so you can reference that. Time to check the BMS safety parameters. So I got the charge right here. Let me turn the amperage up on it. So we're charging the battery and I will put an ice pack that just come out of the freezer around this thermal probe NTC sensor. This is checking for charge protection, low temp charge protection. After this cold soaks, it should disable charging if it's in fact there. Hold it here for a minute or two and see if it drops out charging. Wow, it actually has low temp charge protection. It triggered in less than one minute. Perfect, I'm glad to see that. Very exciting. Now I'll warm it back up and we should really initiate charging. Excellent, excellent. I like seeing that. That's good. Watch the charger, checking for high temp protection through the BMS for the cells. Three, two, one, go. Twenty seconds, perfect. Cool it back down. Initiate charging again. There we go, perfect. Just give it a little hit. Give this battery a little hit right here. Oh yeah. Do something a little different. Today's test, I'm gonna heat up this BMS, see if I can get the thermal to trigger on the BMS. A little bit different, I'm gonna go easy on it. I don't wanna cook anything, but I'm gonna blow some hot air right where that 
by metallic switches, see if I can get it to shut down. Oh, it worked. Awesome. It took it a few minutes to get enough heat in that heat sink on that BMS, but it actually triggered and shut the BMS off from over temp on the actual board. Wow. Now it's going to take forever to cool off, but eh, proved that it worked anyhow. Took it about 10 minutes to cool off. So the initiated charging back because the BMS completely disconnected from that over temperature condition it was seeing through the heat sink. It's still warm, but it, that bimetallic switch popped back in just like it's supposed to. Nice. All right, so now I'm going to do something a little different. Y'all probably not seen in my videos yet. I'm going to check the low temperature discharge protection. I've got a load on the battery now. Instead of charging, I'm pulling out of the battery to a load, 130-ish watt load. So I'm going to hit the sensor with some cold sauce and see if it shuts off. So this will go blank because the battery should disconnect, so you should see this drop out. So I'm going to get the sensor right here, and I'm going to hit it with some cold sauce, and we should see the little display energy meter go blank. Give it a second. Give it a second. Oh, it just dropped out. Awesome. It works. It works. It works. That's good to see. I'm warm it back up right here so we can initiate discharging. So there we go. Let the load come back up. Bam. It's tracking now. And yes, low temp discharge protection works. Nice. So still pulling on that battery. It's looking promising. Hopefully we'll make it to our rated capacity. Everything else over here has been, been pretty good. I'll discuss everything once the capacity test is done, so I'll be back shortly. Still pulling on the capacity test. 1279 with its scope. There it went, 1280 watt hours. There's our 100 amp hours. All right, the capacity test is finished. The inverter shut off, real life capacity test. Uh, no fancy machines in like that, just an inverter. So, you know, that's how you're gonna probably use it. So that's how I test it. 1313 watt hours, so roughly a little over 102 amp hours. I'll give you an exact tally right here. So I'll go over my likes first on the WISE Lithium Iron Phosphate Group 31. Uh, good BMS, Sihang, you know, decent BMS. You know, it's used in many OEMs. It's reliable, uh, pretty good BMS right there. Nothing, nothing to complain about the BMS. It tested above rated capacity. Hey, that's an extra smiley face right there. Get more of what you pay for capacity wise. Proper temperature protections and fast acting temperature protections. Everything I threw at it test-wise on the temperature protections, the BMS popped it just like it was supposed to, quick acting, and I love to see them when they perform like this. So yes, that's two thumbs up as far as that is concerned. And a good cell pack. You know, the cells look good, the welds on the bus bars, everything looks good on the cell pack, put together properly. Uh, cell separators, everything like you want. Now the dislikes. Sad, frowny face right there. It's a couple of tears, you know. Smaller than average wires. You know, these are these are smaller than average. Some of the, the smaller, yeah, of the smaller bunch that I've ever seen on batteries. You know, a 7 and 2 tens. That's on the lower tier of wire size. So, you know, that's room for improvement right there. And that gave us our, you know, voltage, voltage drooper drop under, under bigger loads. And you'll see that. So, you know, it is what it is. The price, a little bit higher than average. Unless you catch them on a coupon, usually the wises are just a smidge higher than the competition, but you can catch coupons and sales and things like that and get the price down, you know, closer to some of the, the new brands that are coming out. But wise is an established brand and I've not heard any problems with people getting warranty from wise. So it might be, might be worth a little extra, the extra price, you know, to know that you have a company that's been around for years. You know, that, that is a good point right there. They have been around for years. And I don't have, you know, any doubts that they're, you know, they're going anywhere anytime soon. A uh, little sloppy on the overall internal build assembly. Not talking about the cell pack. I'm good with everything right here. It's just the way all the epoxy board and stuff was in there with a lot of fiber tape and things and fish paper on top of the sails holding the balance leads and, and things down. Uh, you know, a little bit different than what I'm used to seeing. Just, you know, they could have improved that a little bit, maybe different foam, different style, more precise cut epoxy board, things like that. You know, just a minor gripe. It's not going to affect safety or performance. It's just, just, you know, a minor gripe of mine. Can I recommend the battery? Yeah, I can recommend wise. This is not for trolling motors, golf carts, or none of that nonsense. 
but you know general use you know solar and off-grid yeah as long as you stay under 100 amps it should serve you well and with all the temperature protections feel free to use it all over the world it is protected good to go We're gonna be seeing more of these in the 24 volt system so i have links in the description if you want to look into this a little bit further but thank y'all for watching hope you have a nice day y'all take care and be safe